Hi, this is Chris Converse of Codify Design Studio, and this is a course I've put together on creating multi-screen web design. So what I want to do in this introduction video is show you the final project we're going to be creating. So I'm going to open this HTML file up in a browser. So what we're doing here is using HTML5 and CSS3 media queries to create a design that can change and manipulate itself based on the viewport of the browser browsing your website. So what I'm going to do here is take this web window and open it up. And when we get higher than 980 pixels, the design's going to lock itself down and then center in the browser. When I get below 980 pixels, we're going to set the design up to be liquid or fluid so that all of the items in the page will actually stretch to conform to the overall width of the browser. When I come under a certain pixel width, in this case 500 pixels, notice that the design in the banner changed from a larger banner and a larger logo and a larger sidebar photo to a much smaller banner size much smaller buttons, more spaced out. The assumption here is that we're probably on a tablet device because we're under 800 pixels on the horizontal. So I space out the buttons to make sure you can tap them with your fingers. And then when we get even smaller, under 500 pixels, we rearrange the content altogether. We take the sidebar and move it under the content. And we even take those links at the top and move them down to be underneath the content. So if somebody visits the same page on a mobile device, they can flick their finger down to the bottom and then use the navigation content links once they've finished reading the content. Now I did mention that we'll be using HTML5. There are some older browsers that don't support HTML5 and some CSS3 attributes. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to make use of a Google Shiv that's an HTML5 JavaScript enabler for IE7 and 8. So here we are inside of IE7, which is using semi-transparency based on an alternate style sheet. And it's even rendering the heading area, which is an HTML5 tag, a footer area, which is an HTML5 tag, and a navigation item up here, which is also HTML5. So while IE7 does not support the device-sensitive layout changing, we do see the layout working correctly in IE7. If we hop over to IE9 running in Windows 7, we can see the device is working over here as well. I can even close this down because IE9 has device sensitivity as well. So I can scroll down here and see the button showing up down at the bottom. But what makes this so powerful is that we can run the same content in devices as well. So here's the same design running on an iPad in a simulator here. And if I rotate the screen, I can see that the device will actually change. In this case, we see the medium screen display versus the large screen display. One thing you might notice on iOS devices, the phone and iPad, we might have to pinch down the change. But here we're seeing that full computer screen size. In addition, let's hop over to Android. So inside the Android environment, we can see Android on a horizontal is showing me the tablet view. And I'll hit Control F11 in the simulator here and take a look at Android rendering this page with a width similar to the phone view. So now I can tap and scroll down here and see the button showing up at the bottom as we would see it on a mobile Android phone. So during this course, we're going to be creating the HTML and CSS files necessary to make all of these layouts happen across all of these different screen sizes. And so one of the things we're going to do is be referring back to a sketch. So I always prefer creating a sketch of your interactive projects. This gives us the ability to figure out some of the measurements, figure out our strategy as far as HTML and CSS is concerned, and give us an idea when we're in the HTML and CSS of what some of the measurements are going to be. So in this sketch here, we've actually defined out how we're going to have the design changing. So we've seen this working in all the different browsers, and this is the sketch we came up with to sort of figure out what's going to happen. Figure out the fact that the navigation is actually going to move from the top area on both the computer and tablet area to moving down to being under the content on the mobile phone area. We're also taking these content areas, the left side and right side content containers, and shifting them to be vertical when we switch over to the handheld device as well. So I hope this course sounds interesting to you, and if it does, let's get started with the first movie.